welcome to Finance Simple, where money is made easy. And today, we'll be talking about Canada, the second largest country in the world, and you won't believe it, but it's currently facing numerous problems in its economy. Canada may appear to be just another advanced economy at first glance. It has a modern financial system, rich earnings, advanced industry, and a reasonably high standard of living to keep everything running. But below, Canada is beset by a number of macroeconomic problems that have caused many economists, including the OECD, to predict that it would have the poorest performance of any major economy in the next decades. These are pretty bold assertions, but no one, least of all economists, are capable of foreseeing the future, but it does not negate the validity of the worries. Even while Canada may be the country most affected by these problems, everyone else will undoubtedly have difficulties at some point. At the very least, they may help you learn a lot about the difficulties you may encounter in your own economy. Therefore, why is it predicted that Canada's advanced economy would develop at the slowest rate over the next 50 years? Is there anything that can be done to address these concerns before they start having a significant negative impact on Canadian citizens? Will these problems have an impact on all of our economies? Canada's geographic location brings both blessings and curses. It is fortunate to live so close to the nearest economy in the world, both geographically and culturally. It is the largest trading partner of the United States thanks to this link. Additionally, it has access to both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, opening it even more chances for international commerce, all while being well protected in a lovely tranquil region of the world. Unfortunately, because of its location, the majority of its land area is an inhabited tundra and the majority of its people live in a small number of metropolitan areas near to the southern border where there is a much bigger and more powerful economy. Geographical issues aren't the main cause of Canada's troubles, but they might still get worse. So, keep this in mind for later. The actual issue is that Canadians just earn less than their American counterparts. The typical Canadian just does not make as much money as the average American, but it is also due to how average incomes are lower in Canada. This disparity may be easily explained. Just like Canadians, Americans put in longer hours at work. In order to add more value to their economy, they will give more time. However, even after accounting for working hours, Americans are generally 30% more productive than Canadians. The average American worker generates $66 of value per hour compared to $50 for the average Canadian worker. Why is this? Many economists believe that the disparity between the U.S. and Canada's industrial compositions is what led to this productivity gap. America just has more high-income industrial hubs, which raises the country's average. For instance, there isn't a true Silicon Valley or Wall Street in Canada. However, if this theory is accurate, it would only imply that this difference is essentially irrelevant because a few exceptional value adders driving up the national average don't necessarily reflect the experiences of the majority of economic participants. Since then, the OECD has discovered that Canada still lags behind the U.S. in terms of productivity even when looking at productivity by industry. Therefore, the justification of a high-performing industry falls flat. The true cause is that the U.S. invests far more in raising employee productivity. It requires land, labor, and capital as the three production components in order to manufacture anything. By making your people more youthful, educated, and healthy, you can increase the productivity of your workers. Land is more productive if it is near water resources or has a wealth of natural resources, while capital, which is just items like machinery or infrastructure, appreciates in value as more money is spent on high-quality assets. It's also vital to keep in mind that enhancing any one of these criteria will benefit the other two. For instance, a country may be able to support a greater proportion of younger employees if it discovers a better method to manage its agriculture. If it has a larger population, there will be more individuals to innovate and enhance capital, which is essential for increasing the productivity of labor and land. Due in significant part to its public markets, which draw both domestic and foreign investors, the U.S. is a hub for commercial investment. Of course, Canada has its own stock markets, but they are far smaller and don't draw the same kind of foreign investment. This is obviously anecdotal. Simply put, it makes sense to invest in the U.S. It makes use of the global reserve money. Its business climate is excellent, and since it's so big, it ends up being the preferred option. Even privately held firms in the nation are affected by this in a negative way. For the past 20 years, this increase in housing costs has been a challenge for Canadian communities, but it's now really obvious. 
increased land costs further deprive firms of the funds they could use for capital investments. A company won't have as much money to spend on employee salaries and the equipment it needs to boost the economy if it spends more money renting or purchasing its premises. Additionally, it will be more difficult for those companies to get capital since banks and investors will be more interested in the real estate market than the market of business finance. Ironically, the problem of competent Canadians wishing to relocate to American areas where they can make more and spend much less is being made worse by the affordability of property. Amidst all the negativities mentioned about Canada, it still deserves some respect up to its name. To begin with, it is the 8th largest economy in the world with a GDP of $1.64 trillion. That high GDP spreads out among a relatively modest population of 38 million people. It gives a GDP per capita of $43,258, which maintains stability in their economy. Wealthy individuals from all over the world view Canada as a secure place to put their money, which contributes in part to the country's exorbitant real estate prices. It also takes pride in a strong and stable democratic government and a generally well-managed economy. But according to the OECD's forecast, growth has not been robust and is not expected to pick up anytime soon. The nominal GDP of Canada hasn't increased at all during the previous 10 years. Lastly, their industry. The service, financial, mining, and agricultural sectors of Canada are thriving and despite the fact that its giant brother to the south dominates on all fronts, Canada is still a serious player on the global arena. Always stay focused on learning and developing discipline. Get educated, make a plan, and stay the course. If you found this informative, smash the like button, please share it with a friend, comment down below, and let us know what would you like to have made Finance Simple next. And definitely subscribe so you don't miss new content. Keep your head up, ears open, and always search for knowledge. See you soon.